Hey guys, this is Priyanka. This is a new tutorial series that I'm creating and in this series I'm going to teach you Swift programming language. Swift is a very new language and it is used for iOS development. So I wanted to create a series on iOS development. So I thought first I should make a tutorial on Swift because it's a new language. So I have downloaded Xcode and I have started Swift Playground in that. And these are the topics that I'm going to cover. If you want to download Xcode, I'll put a link in the description box below. You can go on that link and download it. So let's get started. The first topic is constants and variables. If you want to create a constant in Swift, then you need to use let keyword. And this is how you create a constant, let a equals 10. You can't change the value of a constant once you give some value to it because it is a constant. So if you try to change its value, that will give you an error. So the error is cannot assign to value. A is a let constant. Change let to var to make it mutable. So let's remove this. Variables are created using var keyword. So let's create a variable B and assign 20 to it. And you can change variables value as many times as you want. So let's change its value. So you can see all the values here. And if you want to print them, then you will see the output here. So you can see that B's new value is 30 here. Let's create a string variable. So name equals Priyanka. And as you can see that it is storing Priyanka here. Let's create one more variable c equals 10.23 so this is a floating point number and as you can see it is storing 10.23 the second topic is type annotations using type annotations you can explicitly give the data type to the variable as you can see we have not assigned any data type here when we are creating a variable and assigning a value 10 or 20 then it is taking the data type as int by default and if you are creating a string variable it will take the string as the data type if you are creating a floating point variable then it will take double as the data type so what if you want to create a variable of data type float then you can do var d colon float equals 10.23 like this so if you wanted its data type to be float not double then you can do this you can also create a variable of data type string like this and let's create one more of int data type and assign 100 to it so this is how you can use type annotations if you just want to declare the variable and assign a value later then you can do this var g colon string so this is just the declaration I'm just adding a comment here and if you want to assign a value to it later then you can do this but what if you create a variable of data type string and then assign some other value like if you assign some integer value like this then it will give you an error and you can see that cannot assign value of type int to type string so you need to remove that the next topic is print so if you want to print the value of variable a then you can use this and insert a here in parentheses if you want to print the value of b then you can do this and you can insert any variable of any data type or any constant so let's insert g here and you can see the results here this is the output window and you can see the results here as well. What if you want to print my name is and then your name which is stored in G variable then you can do print and here in double quotes my name is and then backslash and in parentheses insert the variable name. I can insert G or name I'll insert name here just storing my name. So you can see it is displaying my name is Priyanka. So this is how you can insert your variable inside the print statement. The next topic is comments. So there are two types of comments, single line and multi line. If you want to 
write a single line comment then you can use two slashes and then write any comment this is a single line comment and if you want to write a multi line comment then you can write slash star and then you can add any number of lines that you want i'll write line one line two line three line four and then when you want to end it then you can write star and slash again so this is how you can end the multi-line comment i'll write this is a multi-line comment next topic is semicolons so as you can see i have never used semicolon anywhere here so semicolons are optional if you want to use them you can use them if you don't want to use them you don't have to use them so if you are very used to coding in java you will have a habit of ending each statement with a semicolon that's perfectly fine you can end each statement with semicolon here as well so what if i create a variable a1 equals 25 and end it with semicolon and i'll print its value here and again i'll end it with semicolon then you can see that it is displaying the result perfectly and what if you don't write the semicolon it will work exactly same the only thing that you have to remember is if you want to write multiple statements on the single line then you have to write semicolon so what if i write this print statement here after this on the same line then there will be an error and you can see that consecutive statements on a line must be separated by semicolon so i have to end this statement with semicolon so that these two statements will get separated so if you don't want to use semicolons just make sure that you're writing each statement on a new line the next topic is data types and there are multiple data types that i'm going to talk about today the first data type is integer so there are two types of integer signed and unsigned and in both of the types there are four types 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit and 64 bit integers so the signed 8 bit integers are called int 8 the unsigned 8 bit integers are called u int 8 same for 16 bit int 16 and u int 16 and int 32 u int 32 and the signed 64 bit integers are called int 64 and u int 64 so which data type do you think will this variable have obviously this will be an integer value because we have written 25 and not 25 point something so this is an int variable but which of these data type do you think will this even have so if your system is of 32 bit then by default it will take int 32 as a data type if you don't mention anything here explicitly and if you are using a 64 bit system then it will take int 64 i am using a 64 bit system so this variable will have int 64 data type but what if you want to create a variable of data type int 16 then you can write var a2 colon int 16 and then give your value like this and you can check the bounds like this i'll just print them so int 8 dot min will give the minimum possible value of int 8 data type which should be minus 128 and print int 8 dot max will give the maximum value which is plus 127 you can see that here and here let's check the bounds of int u int 16 dot min so this should be zero because this is unsigned data type and it always starts with zero because it only takes positive values that are unsigned values and print u int 16 dot max and as you can see the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 65535 the next topic is floating point numbers so there are two types of floating point numbers float and double float data type is of 32 bit and double data type is of 64 bit and by default if you don't mention any data type it takes double as the data type so let's create a variable where 
float colon float equals 2.12 and var double colon double equals 1.34 as you can see it is taking the values so this is how you can create a float variable and this is how you can create a double variable but if you don't mention the data type it will also take the data type as double so you don't have to mention this here if you want to add one int value to a double value then you have to convert the integer value to double or convert the double value to integer whatever you want so let's say you have one integer variable int1 as 20 and you have the double variable db and if you want to add them then you can print the results like this i'll take the double variable plus i'll convert the integer variable like this write double here and then here write the integer variable name and this is how it will convert the int value to double value and then it will add it so you can see the result is correct 21.34 and 21.34 here what if you don't add this here it will give you an error so the error is binary operator plus cannot be applied to operands of type double and int so you have to convert one of them so you have to do this the next one is numeric literals so there are four types of numeric literals the first one is decimal the second one is binary the third one is octal and the fourth one is hexadecimal the base of decimal is 10 the base of binary is 2 the base of octal is 8 and the base of hexadecimal is 16 and if you want to create a decimal variable then you can write var a equals 17 like this and it will create a decimal variable if you want to create a binary variable then you have to write 0b and then you can write your number in binary so the binary number only consists of zeros and ones so i'll write 1001 which is 9 and we'll print those values later and you can check the values if you want to create octal variable then you have to start it with 0 o and then you can write your octal value octal value only takes digits from 0 to 7 which are total 8 digits so i'll write 12 here and then if you want to create a hexadecimal value then you have to start it with 0x and then you can write your hexadecimal value which consists of digits 0 to 9 and a to f letters so i'll write 13 a here so let's print these values here and check what their decimal values are so if i just create var decimal equals 17 then let's create a binary value var bin equals 0b1001 var oct equals 0o12 and var hex equals 0x13a so you can see the values of our variables here decimal is 17 binary is 9 so if you convert this binary value to decimal you will get 9 if you convert this octal value to decimal value you will get 10 if you convert this hexadecimal value 13a to decimal value you will get 314 this is how you can create numeric literals next data type is strings so i have already talked about string if you want to create a string variable you can just write var str and write your value here or if you want to mention the data type explicitly using type annotation then you can write var str1 colon string equals there and if you want to print these two values together then you can use plus to concatenate these two strings so str plus str1 and it should print hello there with a space in between because i have added a space before there so as you can see it is printing hello there here and here as well there will be one complete tutorial on strings because there are a lot of things that you can talk about strings so i'll make a separate tutorial on strings so if you don't understand this statement that's perfectly fine I will teach this again in that tutorial. The next one is tuples. So tuples are used to combine multiple values of different data types. I'm writing this because I'm going to upload this and you can refer this if you want. That's why I'm writing all the comments correctly. 
So if you want to create a tuple, then you can write let tuple one equals and write your values in parentheses. So I'll write one integer value, one string value and one double value. So this is how you can create a tuple and this contains three different data types. This will be stored at index zero. You can see here, this is at index zero, this is at index one, and this is at index two. So if you want to print the 400, then you can write print the tuple name dot zero. If you want to print Priyanka, then you can write tup dot one. And if you want to print 10.1, or 10.2 then you can write tup.2 so you can see all the values are printed here let's create one more tuple where tup2 equals and here you can also give a key to each value so let's say um, id colon 2 name colon tech academy and age colon 24 so you can print the values using these keys. So you can write tup2.id or print tup2.name to print tech academy and print tup2.age to print 24. So you can see all the values are getting printed here. It is printing to tech academy and 24. You can also create it like this where x comma y equals 10 comma 20 so 10 will be assigned to x and 20 will be assigned to y so you can just print the values like this x and print y it will also give 10 and 20 so as you can see the value of x is 10 and the value of y is 20 and it is getting printed here and here so the next and the last data type that i'm going to talk about today is bool bool is boolean and it takes only two values true or false so if you want to create a bool data type then you can write var bool one equals true like this you can also write it like this what if you want to change the value you can write bool one equals and i can write a condition here like one less than three so one is less than three so it is true and it will take the value true again and let's write one value which is false one equal to three so one is not equal to three so it should change the value to false here as you can see the first value is true the second value is true because this condition is also true and one is not equal to three so this value is false so this is how you can use bool these are mostly used for if and while conditions or flagging purpose so this is it for today i hope you enjoyed this video in the next tutorial, I'll talk about the basic operators. I have also added one exercise here. So if you want to solve it, then you can solve it and you can post your answer in the comment below. I'm also working on a website where I'm going to post all these tutorials and the material also. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Bye.